Welcome back to the series of videos in which I try and recreate the NES sound chip using Max MSP. In the previous video, I added some functionality to my single rectangular oscillator. I made it possible to change the pulse width and also the vibrato speed and depth. In this video, I'm going to step things up a notch by adding polyphony, two voice polyphony, by using yet another rectangular oscillator. I'm going to tie both of these objects to this poly right here. Before I do that though, I want to clean this patch up a bit. Well, more specifically, I know I'm going to add another reg, and I'm going to add all of these guys for a second time, and this is going to clutter up my patch. So what I can do is to simply encapsulate some of these objects into a sub patcher. So I'm selecting all the objects that relates to my oscillator here, processing the information that's coming in, processing the information that goes out, and I'm not including the volume controls and the audio output here because all oscillators are going to share these objects. After I've selected all of these, I'm going to go to edit and click on encapsulate, or I can simply press shift, command, and E on my keyboard. And this is going to create a sub patcher. All the objects are still in here. If I want, I can rename this object. I just have to leave that P intact, press space, and then type in the name of the sub patch. In this case, I am going to be simple and I'm going to name it rect osc1, since this is the first rectangular oscillator in this patch. Now, if I want to, I can also lock this patch or double click on the sub patch and I'll see the contents that are still here. This is still going to function in the same way as it did before. There is no problem with that. These inlet objects still report the information that is coming inside to into the sub patch that is being processed and this outlet object is sending out the resulting information from the sub patch. And there is another cool thing I can do if I have the sub patch, which is to copy it. I can select it, do the classic command C, command V, and now I have a copy of this oscillator. I can even rename it, I can name it rect osc2. And now if I lock it and look into it again, it is going to be the exact same set of notes. I've just copied my existing oscillator. There is a little problem though. Do you notice what's going on here with these send and receive objects? This send note off sends the note off information. This R note off receives the information and it multiplies the outgoing audio signal with that value in order to shut down the notes that are not supposed to be heard. The problem is both instances of my oscillators share the same names for their send and receive objects. That means that if a message is going into this send note off, the initial, the first oscillator is also going to receive that message. Both oscillators are going to receive the messages that any of them are sending. And this is going to create vacuum and un unintended behavior. We do not want that. So a so an easy way to fix this is to simply rename these send and receive objects. So for my first oscillator, I'm going to name them note off one. And for the second one, I'm going to name it note off two. Okay, so now we truly have two unique oscillators. Also do note that they are still being controlled by the same control and messages the same knob changes the settings of both oscillators, but that is something I want in this case. All right, now let's take a deeper look into this poly right here. I used poly in the very first video of the series to regulate my monophonic synth, right? I made it so, you know, pressing multiple keys in quick succession, overlapping notes, do not trigger or de-trigger unnecessary notes in my single oscillator. However, that is not the main function of poly. That is not the intention of the poly object. Poly is used to allocate incoming notes and velocity note and velocity information between different voices, different oscillators, different subpatchers, you name it. And we can set the amount of voices by changing the first argument of poly. So if I type in poly two here, now this is going to expect two voices, 
this poly is going to try to allocate notes and velocities between two voices. And remember the second argument, this one turns on the stealing mode. And stealing mode makes sure that if I play an additional note on top of, in this case, two notes, it deactivates the very first note, the oldest note, and adds in the extra note. This setting is makes it very intuitive to play polyphonic synths, and you'll see that most polyphonic synths, hardware synths, have a similar function. Now, let's look at how this object behaves. So I'm going to create three integer number boxes. I'm going to connect these guys here. And now if I play something, of course, we are not hearing anything because this information is not really being sent anywhere in this patch. But you can see that the second and third outlets are the, uh, the pitch and the velocity information. And it is the first outlet that changes upon each key press. It goes between one and two. And this is supposed to tell which voice is supposed to receive this information. So I want it to be so that if this says one, this information is sent to my first oscillator. If it says two, it is sent to the second oscillator. And to do this, I'm first going to pack this information into a message by simply using pack, and then I have to tell it what kind of elements are going to be in this list. In this case, it's three integer values, so 0, 0, 0 should do the trick. And then I'm going to delete these and connect these guys right here. And let's also align it so it looks nice and pretty. Okay, now look what happens. If I press something now, it is just sending the whole message as a single list. And this means that I can use one of my favorite objects, routes, which is going to select an outlet based on input matching. So if I type in route and then give arguments uh, one and two, it is going to look for one and two at the beginning of incoming messages. If the incoming message starts with one, it is going to send the rest of the message from the first outlet. If it starts with two, it is going to send the rest of the message from the second outlet. If it does not start with any of these, it's going to send the whole message from its third outlet. And this doesn't have to be one and two. I can type in tomato and potato, and then it would look for those, uh, yeah, those values at the beginning of the messages. But in this case, I want it to be one and two. And let's see how it looks by creating another set of message boxes and connecting these guys. And now, as you can see, if the message is intended for the first voice, it's coming out from the first outlet. If it's intended for the second voice, it's coming out from here. So I can very, very simply just connect this here. And I can connect the outgoing audio like this. And then this should give me some basic polyphony. Why am I not hearing anything? Of course, I'm not hearing anything because I did something very silly. Now, look at this. This object is sending out a list, velocity, a pitch, and velocity. But this whole sub patch expects these as separate messages. The first one should be the frequency, the second one should be the velocity. So before putting these in my sub patch, I have to unpack these guys. I have to type in unpack and again, what kind of elements are there in this message? Well, two integer numbers, so zero, zero. I'm going to copy this here. And now after unpacking it and sending all the data to its appropriate place, I believe I can have two voice polyphony. have it. If you want, you can expand this, right? You can have three voices, five voices, 10 voices, 20 voices, 568 voices. It doesn't matter. Of course, if you have that many voices, there are easier ways to handle polyphony. But in this case, for two voice, simple polyphony, I find this way the most straightforward one. In the next video, I'm going to continue by adding a few more oscillators, triangular oscillator and pitch noise oscillator and eight bit sampler. And I'm going to make it so it's possible to control those by using the pads of my MIDI controller. 
Until then, thank you for watching.